Welcome to Weather and Climate Chat with the Monsoon Mike and Dr. Michael Davis. Dr. Michael Davis, welcome to the podcast. It is November nineteenth, Monday, uh, Thanksgiving week. We're only a couple of week, a couple of weeks. Yeah, right. A couple of days away from Thanksgiving. It's come so fast this year. And just a little calendar tidbit. I know you like little tidbits as well as you post on Facebook. This is the earliest that Thanksgiving can be. November 22nd is the earliest it can be because it's always the fourth Thursday of November and the month began on a Thursday. So therefore, mm-hmm. we are having our earliest Thanksgiving possible. So that means we'll have our longest Christmas shopping season possible. And I'm sure the retailers <laughs> love that. <laughs> we'll see about that. But yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's more economy than uh, meteorology. But more, meteorology is tied in with uh, logistics and it commerce. It is tied in so. with everything. It is tied yeah. in with everything. So, yeah. So, well, obviously what's on everybody's mind is our little uh, – uh, event that happened last Thursday, and hey, we, we you know we're, we're the first to say when we're not a hundred percent correct, and we did not nail this one, nor did a no. lot. Of, no, <laughs> in fact, what I'm going to do here is, uh, are, you, are you a fan of the Price Is Right? Sure. Okay, so you would probably recognize this sound. This was basically our forecast uh, this past week. That was basically our... Yep. (laughs) (laughs) I can't argue with that. There was a lot of meteorologists that pretty much tanked on their forecast. Yeah. So what exactly did happen? We were, first of all, to to recap, we were calling for, and basically everybody was calling for, and I think I was even a little bit more on the aggressive side than you. I had said one to three inches. You had said maybe a coating inch to most. Uh, We got basically four to eight inches across the area. Mm -hmm. Um, what, What happened? I will say that... The Weather Channel did get it right, because you and I heard that multiple times, so I'm wondering if we should call this winter storm Avery, like we right, were calling yeah, it. Right, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, but that's a whole other story for <laughs> another and time. I, I, I know somebody whose last name is Avery, and she was having fun with that. You know, mm-hmm. they named a storm after her. So, yeah. But the uh, European model, if mm-hmm. I'm not mistaken, was calling for about eight inches of snow mm-hmm. for our area. The NAM was as well, I think. Yeah. So, but they were seen more as outliers right. rather than the consensus. So, right, normally right. in meteorology, you want to go with a consensus unless mm-hmm. you're really sure that the outlier could come into play and that's pretty much what I was playing for forecasting was the consensus right but because of it being early in the season still um, the dynamics just really weren't looking right mm-hmm. you had that dry slot that looked like it was trying to work itself in right that's why I tempered my snowfall tolls and we got burned right the low pressure Consensus looked like it was going pretty much out to sea, uh, not really going over the coast. But I believe, I don't know if you want to correct me on this, but I saw it going over southern New Jersey mm-hmm. during that's, the whole that's what I saw. ordeal, yeah. which put it closer to us. Mm-hmm. So the cold pool was brought down closer to our area, so you had right. a lot more colder air to deal with. You had the temperature gradient set up from the land and the ocean, which then produced a lot of what we term baroclinicity, which essentially is air rising due to changes in temperature. Right. And that progressed into a more sustainable, more effective, more robust uplift Mm -hmm. to the storm. And then that really got us to get the snowfall that we observed. And it was actually, and this is something that I had talked about a little bit as well, too, the, the intensity was pretty heavy there for a while, too. Mm-hmm. Uh, it was, uh, I don't want to say whiteout conditions, but it was definitely on the moderate to heavy side for a while. And sometimes when snow falls fast enough, that can tend to cool the air a little bit, too, right? That's right. Right. So it was a, basically, it was the, the, the perfect storm of mistakes to happen for it to all fall into place. Yeah, yeah. the dynamics, I think, maybe some people were treating it maybe a little... Underestimating the actually potency of the storm, right, and that led to the headaches that were generated afterwards with right. uh, trying to get home, mm-hmm. and it didn't really look like there was much preparation right. that was done, whether that be at the pen dot level, mm-hmm. whether that be at local municipality levels, right. So there wasn't really any brining or salting going on I and then you that. had a lot of people that then left in the afternoon right right and you had a mass rush of cars going on to already poor roadways mm. and that led to travel delays and difficulty yeah i i i heard everywhere from you know two hour ride homes to 12 hour ride homes <laughs> so at people, least they got to yeah. see a camel 
Yeah, and then and the famous snow camel, which made all kinds of <laughs> internet sensation. That was that was pretty crazy. Yeah, yes. down in the what was that Quakertown area? I think uh, Perkesy. I think Perkesy. Okay, mm-hmm. three hundred nine like, south. Three hundred nine south. Yeah, for, for the story has it that uh, they it was a camel going to some sort of I believe Jewish festival in Philadelphia, but they, the the vehicle that was hauling the camel couldn't make it up the hill, so they let the camel off to. You know, lighten the load. To lighten the load a little bit. So everybody driving by got pictures of this camel in the snowstorm. And the, the funniest one I saw was, you know, obviously if you follow the, the biblical story of the birth of Jesus, um, you know, the in, in Bethlehem. And uh, the funniest meme I saw was, uh, oh, I, I was going to the wrong Bethlehem. <laughs> he, was, he was near the Bethlehem around here instead of the one over there. So, yep. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, so that was definitely, it, it was definitely a memory. I would say in my uh, 42 years, and you, you know me, I I love dates and remembering uh, weather history. That would be my top, one of my top two favorite early season snowstorms. Uh, only the other one being the pre-Halloween storm of 2011, a number mm-hmm. of years ago. Yeah, this one really yeah. overperformed. And yeah. And I that, think and caught a lot one, of people off guard. That one, it. that one did too. But that one, we were a little more prepared for it because we actually saw that one coming a few days ahead of time. This one, we didn't really see the, this intensity that in that mm-hmm. short distance. I didn't hear much yeah. about. Like power outages or anything? Because no, that's something I didn't. There's see. a lot of leaves still on the trees. Right. We were we were lucky with that. I, I I actually did see some power outages blip up on the map, but not widespread, which was good. And then you and I were remarking about the uh, pen dot map and how it was all orange all red. and red. Yep. Yeah, it was definitely it was bad. It was Thursday was definitely a a, uh, a rough day. One of the more memorable early season snowstorms. I think uh, Allentown broke a record for the, uh, the the heaviest November snowfall. I believe is that number correct? That uh, sounds right. Yeah, I, I forget what their exact number was, but I do remember. I think it was like I, I think they had like uh, seven point three inches somewhere around there, and then the prior one was maybe like six point nine inches. Harrisburg, I know, came in second place. I know they had one storm a little bigger in November, like back in nineteen sixty eight or something like that. But it was definitely one of the bigger November snow mm-hmm. events. Yes. <laughs> so. So, well, that's all past us now. Hopefully we can get, uh, you know, we it's, it's not going to be a forecasting nightmare all winter long for future storms like this. Uh, what do we have coming up this week? It looks like just a fairly wintry week coming up. Yeah, we have a clipper system that's going to be passing through yeah. uh, today and into tomorrow. May bring us some rain or some snow showers later this evening, maybe into the overnight. But then it looks like we get a secondary clipper system that comes through tomorrow. I see you're pulling up the models right now. Yeah, the, the GFS, which just came out at 12 o'clock, actually has the northern tier of Pennsylvania, uh, like northern Pennsylvania, New York. Might even get an inch or two out of this. I, I've seen some forecasts up that way. It, it should be mainly on the liquid side around here. Cause we, we yes, should be, uh, because we have a fair amount yeah. of warm air advection going on right now, and I believe we're in the low 40s right, right now. Yeah. And we're probably looking at about mid forties or so today. So some rain showers later today into tonight. Uh, and then we got that. Uh, is there a secondary low there somewhere? Mm. I think it's up in Ontario. Oh, okay, yeah. Tomorrow, looks but it like, looks like it doesn't really fan yeah, our area. It doesn't really much. do much. Maybe a snow shower Tuesday or Wednesday. The big story, actually. Well, well, first of all, Wednesday being travel day, a lot of people hit the road traveling. Uh, we let's see what the whole country looks like for that because we got to take into consideration that not all of our fans are just going to be hanging in Pennsylvania. Uh, they might be traveling. So travel day Wednesday afternoon, not too bad around the country. Looks fairly quiet, uh, except for snow up, showers upstate New York. Snow showers New upstate England. New York, New England, which is kind of typical for this time of year. And not, some much needed shower activity in California. Yep, some much needed shower activity in Northern Pacific California, Northwest. Pacific Northwest, but most of the country fairly dry. So if you're going mm-hmm. anywhere up and down the East Coast, except for those snow showers in New England and except for far out west, you should be pretty good for travel. And that's day. all thanks to the big high pressure that's coming out of Manitoba right. north, but it's going to make things nice and chilly for our neck of the woods. Yeah, here comes uh, Thanksgiving morning. This is like 7 a.m. Thanksgiving morning. Big trough over our area. Lots of blue lines there. Very cold Thanksgiving morning. Thanksgiving morning might feel more like uh, January than, than Thanksgiving. It might feel here. more like Christmas morning. It might feel more like Christmas morning. And then on Christmas, we'll probably have 71 degrees like we had a couple of years ago. <laughs> That's right. You remember that? I remember that. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, again, uh, Thanksgiving, if you're doing your traveling on Thanksgiving, up and down the East Coast looks fairly uneventful. Really, the only event. Gulf Coast looks like. Gulf Coast something. a little bit. Something cooking down there, you know, like the. In the Western U.S. In the again. Western U.S. again, some rain and snow showers, but nothing too much other than cold. Uh, so a fairly 
uh, harmless drive uh, this this Thanksgiving, which is always a good thing. If you're going to be one of those people standing out on uh, uh, Friday morning at like 5 a.m. for the early morning sales, you're going to be a little chilly. <laughs> but at least dry. At least dry. Uh, just looking at the... Uh, the the temperature prognostications for overnight uh, where when you're standing out there at one in the morning waiting for the doors to open about anywhere from 15 to 20 degrees in our area so mm, better bundle up better bundle up it's going to be a little chilly or uh, if you're ironically looking for a winter coat or that's on black the, friday there you go <laughs> uh and then uh looks like our next bout of precipitation comes in the form of rain uh saturday into sunday with a what? What is what is the cause of this storm? Is it a low pressure of some sort? Uh, I don't even know what it is. Um, oh, hold on! I got to <laughs> zoom back out to the entire country. There we go. Uh, it looks like some moisture down toward the Carolinas, mm, kind of fanning up right. along the uh, backside of the high pressure. Right, but it looks the good news for travelers coming home on Sunday, since Sunday's our other big travel day, coming back home is it looks to be warm enough for rain. So yeah, even so the even, winds will be out of the south if that's gonna happen with the high pressure moving off uh, Long Island there. So even though it's going to be so brutally cold three or four days prior, actually Sunday itself is going to be on the fairly mild side. Uh, Temperatures Sunday afternoon look to be upper 40s, low 50s, maybe even some 60s down uh, by Washington, D.C. and Virginia. So um, if you don't mind some rain, not a bad drive home on Sunday. Nope. Looks pretty nice. Yeah, and then we get back into next week, and uh, well, we don't like to go that far out. We'll, we'll, yeah, we'll maybe work. a low pressure coming across the Great Plains and yeah. Great Lakes region. I've seen some of the weather weenies getting excited about early next week already, and yeah, there could be something cooking there, as as you and I can both see. But yeah, it looks more like thunderstorms maybe for us. Yeah, like, <laughs> <laughs> if this holds true, if the GFS at twelve o'clock on Monday, November nineteenth is true, next Monday could be a little warm and thunderstormy. So hey, that would hey, par for the course. No thunderstorms all in the course of ten days in Pennsylvania. What do you, you know? That's right. That's right. Yeah. So, it, as we always say, crazy climate, and let's get to our topic of the week: the climate. Of course, everybody's talk being uh, the horrible wildfires out west, uh, pretty unprecedented. I think we're uh, over uh, what still a thousand people unaccounted for, or something. Yeah, crazy. from the campfire. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And well, we had the Woolsey fire. Why is it and... called a campfire? One of my friends thought it was because it was actually started by a campfire, but it really wasn't. I, I think it was. Start- I believe that has to deal with the location in okay. which the fire originated. Okay, because if anything, I think they were tracing the source to an electrical line or something that started the whole thing, I believe. Mm-hmm. But, but either way, I mean, it's horrible what's going on out there. Are, are definitely our thoughts and positive energies and prayers, whatever you believe in, uh, going out to the folks in, in Northern California. Now, we've had our commander-in-chief, who has weighed in on uh, the cause of, of what's happening out there. We'll talk a little bit about that and, and what, what, what we think about that. You know, he's mentioned that it's just mismanagement from the forest and I will tell him that that is incorrect. Okay. You're dealing with drought that's been persisting for five, ten years. We've known about this drought for a long time. Yes. And you're having more intense heat waves, more warmer temperatures, less soil moisture. It just goes into this whole tinderbox, I guess pun intended if you want to go with it. Right. More easily easily ignitable. Which then leads to these wild, large wildfires, right? So, and he also mentioned about raking up leaves that they do over in Finland. They mm-hmm. don't get wildfires. Right. They had wildfires this past summer north of the Arctic Circle, just I've, like Sweden and Norway. And so, this whole raking idea is baloney. <laughs> Let's just say not very scientific. Not very scientific. Okay. So, so, so w- w- what is scientific? I mean, is is what we've seen in Cal- Northern California in the drought, is this directly resulting or indirectly resulted to climate change, would you say? I would say that the fingerprints of climate change are all over it, okay. for sure. And we're likely going to be seeing more of these large fires and larger fer- uh, ferocious storms out in the West as a result of what we're observing in our changing climate. That's kind of definitely very concerning. Uh, is the, what is, I haven't checked lately, Dr. Davis, what is the status of the fires? Are they getting an upper hand on it? Is, is things starting to calm down a little bit? Uh, the fires are still going on. Right. But I believe they are making some progress. Okay. But I was reading an article, I think it was in the Atlantic recently, that was mentioning that they're now setting up like post-traumatic areas for the firefighters because sure. they're 
just seeing sites that are pretty much mm-hmm. unprecedented. Sure. And sometimes they're told to go home, and then the fire rages on, and then they come back. and It's worse, you, yeah. It, it's a very difficult situation for everybody involved, including firefighters and those that are still missing loved ones at this point. Is this a concern that this could, obviously, California... We've known this for a while that something like this could happen with the persistent drought out there. But is it something like this a concern in other parts of the country in future decades, would you say? Yeah, I would see drying conditions, particularly out in the uh, central United States, mm-hmm. uh, the former Dust Bowl area. Right. You're going to be getting very dry over there. The Ogallala Aquifer is being depleted at record rates. Right. So you could have wildfires potentially in that area, too. And not so much out east because we typically get more rainfall, mm-hmm. specifically the uh, na- latest national climate assessment. We sure got that this past year. <laughs> it has the yeah. northeast yeah. Uh, generally getting wetter. Right. So while the rest of the country is appears to be drying out, northeast appears to be getting more precipitation. Right. And is that a pattern that you think will, or a trend that will continue, or is this, is this part of the climate change uh, with uh, the Northeast being wetter and the other parts being drier? With climate change, I do think you're going to have a lot in the way of extremes. So right. you're going to have areas that could be bone dry yeah. for months, and then they get deluged water for months after that. So now you get this dry and wet condition, which then leads to flash flooding, or then leads to a lot of surface runoff, and that water does not get recharged into the ground, so you're not really eating away at any of the droughts. Bringing this back to a local level, Dr. Davis, I actually had somebody ask me, and I thought it was a valid question, how, at least in this part of the country, we don't really seem to have, like, nice falls anymore. I mean, it was only, what, 40-some days ago that we were talking about 85 degrees, and the other mm-hmm. day we had a snowstorm, and in between we had a couple of weeks of transition, and that was it. It's like we're going from summer to winter in the course of, you know, 40 days. Is that the new normal for our area, where we don't really have, you know, nice falls anymore? Yeah, it seems as though the transition... Uh, seasons of spring and autumn are becoming shorter and mm-hmm. we're getting either cold or warm conditions. Right. Uh, I honestly don't know if I can read into that at right. this point, but I will say that I do have one of my undergraduate student researchers that is looking at transitions between April and May temperatures. Mm-hmm. And what parts of the country are seeing the greatest jump in those temperatures going from April, say, freezing temperatures and snowfall to May, where we've seen 90 degrees like we saw uh, this year, I think. Yeah, and and we should mention that, you know, just so any doubters don't get after us, that, you know, you can't really judge or base an, an idea of climate change off of one year or one season or no. whatever. You know, we had a crazy year this year. Does is this year alone mean climate change? Not necessarily, but when we start putting together, wow, the past 10 years or so have been very odd, that could signal something. Yeah, well, essentially yeah. if you're stacking the deck right. with wildfires, for instance, right. if you see that they're getting more prevalent, mm-hmm. larger, more hotter burning, right. you're going to be essentially skewing the climate toward a environment that is very hospitable for them. Right. So essentially you're raising the bar on how often these events are going to occur. Interesting. All right. Well, we'll just have to watch and definitely keep uh, you know, our, our ear to the ground. And of course, it's it's important to do our thoughts and prayers and stuff, but we also need to take action as well and, you know, get our legislators and make sure we vote in people that actually will help, uh, you know, you know, base their logic off of science rather than just things that really are not scientifically based. And I, if I, my memory serves correctly, mm-hmm. too, right. the last um, election that we had, our midterm elections, I believe 70, 80 percent of the millennials voted for climate uh, change um, as one of their uh, top issues. Yeah. Yeah, one of their so top the issues, politicians yeah. got voted in by that demographic that's good. at a much larger rate and because that's a good they thing. agree with climate change. And that's a good thing. So, you know, little steps, I guess you could say. Yes. But okay. we just need to make some more aggressive moves, but it does bode well, I would say, for the future where you're going to have some accountability in these politicians that don't want to address climate science. Right. 
All right, Dr. Michael Davis, we don't mean to end on a somewhat of an ominous note, but uh, you know there is, there is time to correct things if we just make the right choices, and we saw that a little bit in the past election, which is a good thing. Mm-hmm. So uh, we just wish everybody a very uh, happy Thanksgiving yes. coming, coming up on Thursday. Uh, I guess we can reconvene. And uh, next week or the week after, as we get closer, mm-hmm. are you going to be around winter break? Doctor? Yes, I'll be around winter break. All right, so we'll be here to you know pose any uh, doom and gloom if some more storms are coming or anything like that. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Maybe we'll have a better track record at that. A better, better track record at that point. All right, Dr. Michael Davis, I want to thank you so much for joining me today on our podcast, and we'll see you again soon. Have a great Thanksgiving. You too. Okay.